Hey, what's going on guys? I'm Joe Bach from Box Garage. And today I wanna to be talking a little bit about what a shave kit is and is it right for your project or your axle build? So I've been going and I've been looking up a lot of different research on, uh, you know, different axles in general, but mostly the Dana 60 up front here because I have a new one that I'm putting under my diesel Bronco. This is an axle that I kind of came into because I needed some parts off it. And I, you know, one thing led to another, I want to beef it up and swap it under my truck. So one of the things that came to mind was a shave kit. And then there also was a few things that I was going to add, like a truss, some odds and ends. So if you want to follow along with that, you know, all the build and the installs coming, so be sure to subscribe to the channel and that'll be here. But the one thing that really caught my mind and did a lot of research on whether or not I really needed it was the shave kit. So before we get too deep into like, if I needed it, let me explain a little bit of what it is. So here, is the diff cover off this axle, as you can see by the crustiness on it. Bolts up right up front. It's the full length. Actually, this is backwards, but you get the idea. Um, it's the full length, it goes to the bottom, and has this piece of the bottom here that's usually like a big rock catcher. It hangs low, and it's flat. So if you catch something, it acts as like an anchor, and it slams into that rock, and you're stuck. I know on my truck, the one that's out there, that that's all smashed up, the bolts are worn, and I've been caught on it, you know, dozens of times. It's not a huge deal, especially with the front end, where you can either back up, you know, wiggle the wheels a little bit, kind of get a new line and miss it. But it is something that does hang you up. So I'm like, you know what? Let's see what we can do about that. So what I came across was this shave kit, and Ballistic Fabrication makes a bunch of them. This is, like I said, for the Dana 60 but they make them for the corporate 14 bolts, the uh, Sterling 1025. So I'm looking into that in the future if I like this one after I install it. Uh, a couple of, I don't know if it was Unimog axles or uh, some other military axles, but they make a bunch of them. So I looked into it and what it does is it's a diff cover, first of all, and then some plates on the bottom and you go, and this goes on its front here. I'll show you a little bit of a close up in a minute, but as you can see, there's a gap under here, under where my finger is. And you can go and remove that. You shave it off. That's why they call it a shave kit. And you go and replace it with this piece of plate. You weld this in. It's clearance on the inside for the gear here, which is pretty cool. And on a day 60, it shaves you about an inch. So an inch of uh, clearance. So what does that inch work for you? On this truck, you know, it's equivalent to going on any truck. It's equivalent to going two inches bigger on tire. So that's something to keep in mind. And, uh, you know, that's where we're going to start. So this kit is pretty cool. As you guys saw, it comes with a diff cover. It comes with two plates for the bottom. One is to go and seal up the diff. And the other is a actual stronger piece of plate that you weld underneath for protection. And then it also came with a little brochure and all the associated hardware that you need. So that was pretty cool. It looks like it's really well made. And uh, to help you guys get a kind of an idea of what the perks are of this, I'm gonna mock up the diff cover on the front here so you can see. So here we have the diff cover is thrown on with two bolts. And on the bottom is where all the magic happens. So that is our about inch of clearance. I measured it out and it falls just a little bit short once you add the width of the plate in that's going to be welded to the bottom but the plate that welds to the diff right here is flush with the bottom of this so that's that and then there's this little thin plate here that gets welded underneath and that's just for a little bit of extra protection but this is the one that bolts to the differential cover and then gets welded on to the bottom where you machine this hole out so it gives you that inch of clearance. But the other benefit is if you take a look from the side here is that now you're going to be completely angled up front. So if you end up slamming into a rock or something, you're a bit of a guide. You have a guide to kind of like put you up and over it rather than before where you had a flat lip that just ends up as a catch. So I think that's pretty cool. And I also think it'll be nice to have a flat belly on here and not this just anchor of a casting at the bottom. 
So I had mentioned the plates. It might have been a little confusing, so I wanted to just go and clarify that. So this is the diff cover on the front. And this plate goes and is bolted to the front here. Right at the bottom. And there's these nice countersunk holes. You got three new drill and tapped holes that will now be bolted to this piece that will be welded to the bottom of your differential. So you're going to shave off, yeah, I don't know, an inch or so, inch and a half, and then you're going to weld this plate back in. So it's going to go like right here, weld all the way around. And that's going to be, this is going to be cut straight across, and then this is going to be welded in. Then I had mentioned a secondary plate for more protection, and that is this one. I forget what they said on the website this was, but I think it was some kind of like armor plate. I, I gotta look. But this goes and gets welded to the bottom of the differential for more protection. So this is gonna be your only little bit of lip now past the diff cover, that piece right there. So it gives you that flat belly, It'll be real easy to skid across this compared to just getting caught on that front flat face like I've done before. And what's really nice, like I said, this comes all the way back. So you eliminate this back hump too, if you can see there. So those are, uh, that's how the kit installs. So we talked about the parts of this thing. Gives you that extra inch of clearance, which is the equivalent to running like two inches bigger on tire. So that's like a pretty big deal. I'm running 44s in the truck now. So I'd be like going to like a 46, where I don't really need that much tire. It'd be nice to have a little bit more clearance underneath. So this is a good first step. But like I said, there's definitely drawbacks. One of the first you have to think about is the, I wouldn't even say price, probably just the amount of work. If you're on a truck that like is running the axle, you're gonna to have to pull this axle out. You're gonna to have to strip it all the way out. It's a lot of time and a lot of money. You know, you're gonna end up doing new bearings, new seals, all that stuff. And I can see why for most people, this wouldn't be like something they're looking forward to. I looked out, I had this axle sitting here. So I'm like, you know what? It's on a bench. It's perfect. This is the perfect time to do it. The other thing you have to consider is that you have to have the equipment to do it. You gotta go weld that plate in. That's, you know, a lot of people don't have access to that. You also have to go cut the bottom of this diff off. And that's actually a little bit of the lesser part. I've seen a lot of videos where people are using angle grinders and saws alls and they just cut the bottom and, you know, make it fit up. And, you know, I probably would be doing that approach, but luckily we came across the Bridgeport a couple of years back. So I've been kind of eyeing this up as a fun machining project. If you guys want to follow along and check out the next video, I actually made up a jig to hold this thing in the on the bridge port and i'm actually going to use a fly cutter to machine the bottom flat as of now it may turn into an end mill if the fly cutter is not doing it but as of now that's the plan so we'll see how that works but uh most people don't have access to equipment like that so you know you're going to be hacking away in this thing with a grinder which you know shouldn't take that long really and the welding i think would be the harder part especially there's a whole process on their ballistics website you want to go get this thing hot you want to weld it on there. You want to wrap it in a welding blanket, let it cool over a couple days, you know, or a, couple, a day. So this is a lot to it. So I can see why people wouldn't want to do it. The next thing that I sort of touched on was price. And while you're going to have to be spending, you know, money on seals and this and that, the real money's in the kit. This kit's like 450 bucks or so. And uh, that's a lot, but you also have to consider what you're getting. If you were to just go buy a normal diff cover, which I have, I've run rough stuff diff covers before, and they're great. Um, they're like 150, 200 bucks. So you're really only paying like another two, 250 for that, the machine, you know, the custom diff cover and the plates on the bottom. So you get an extra inch of clearance for, you know, 200 something bucks. That's pretty good compared to, you know, go price out tires that are two inches bigger than what you're running. So, you know, that's one part on that. And, uh, it kind of just needs to make sense with what you're doing. If you have this axle out, you're going to re-gear it anyway, put new axle shafts and everything in it, it might be the perfect time. But we'll uh, touch on that in a little bit later on who I think would benefit from doing this and who I don't think it's really worth, you know, going through all this hassle. So let's move on to that. 
the people I see benefiting from this the most are people kind of like on the East Coast who are working a lot with rock that moves around. I know my truck's heavy, I'm like 8,000 pounds, and I can get out of position really quick, and the front diff could be in rocks, and uh, it'd be nice to have a little bit more clearance. If I was out like wheeling out west, I went and uh, did a little jeeping out there, I rented a jeep in, outside of Vegas, the rocks stay in place, nothing really moves. So like you kind of can stick to a line better, where like I don't think this would be super beneficial out there. Another place I could see like someone wanting to run this is if they're running like smaller tires, whether that be like 35s or 37s or even like 33s. I know some people go and they spend a lot of money on building up like a half ton axle to run smaller tires and keep it streetable and all that great stuff where they might be just money ahead if they were to go and just shave a one ton axle smaller and then just put like kind of you know, more standard parts in it and then run smaller tires on it. A lot of people stick to those smaller axles as half tons, as like the Dana 44s, you know, four nine inches, things like that, just due to the clearance underneath. But if you go, you pull an inch off the bottom of this or an inch and a half, two inches off the of sterling, you're gonna be in the same ballpark as those axles. So I think people uh, who are considering building up a half ton axle due to that reason and running smaller tires may wanna look into something like this. All right, so I talked about some people who I think would benefit from this. Let's move on to people that I wouldn't really recommend doing this. The first would probably be people that couldn't do a lot of this work themselves. I know Ballistic starting a program where you could send in their app, your axle, you could have it shaved, you can even have them weld it up. I think it's like 800 bucks plus the price of the kits, maybe 12, 1500 bucks after shipping, maybe a little bit more, two grand. And I think that's a lot of money for this, you know? But if you're in the market, you're gonna be building an axle put a you know a locker in re-gear if you know if you're spending money on that i guess it just depends on your personal situation but for me personally like i couldn't justify that if i couldn't do this work myself other people where i think uh this wouldn't really pay out would be people that play a lot in the mud like you're not playing in a loose rock i just don't think it's beneficial like even if you're in deep mud i couldn't imagine like whatever that inch is being that much drag that it's going to you know change anything for you if you're even going to make it you know realize there's a difference on it so i wouldn't recommend it i think for mud and then like the last slight like, group of people i don't think would really benefit from it are people that like well first off i guess don't wheel your rig like i wouldn't do this to a mall crawler but also people who don't keep their vehicles long if you're like going in and out and you're one of those people that don't really you know stick with a project for too long you wheel it for a year or two like i don't know it just might not be for you because I don't think you would see the returns on it for the amount of effort you're putting in. I think for something like that, you know, run the bigger tires. Go find a set of oversized tires on Marketplace to throw them on, or there's just, you know, a winch or something. Like, odds, like, things like that are just gonna be quicker, easier, and more return. I would say this is more for people that are, like, long-term in it. You do it once, you're gonna have it on that axle forever. So, like, it's just longer time to get your dividend out of it, so. That's kind of what I was thinking on all of this and how I came to the conclusion. I plan on having my truck for a long time. And like I, I'll show you, I've slammed my front diff into a ton of rocks right there on the bottom. And it just was the perfect time because I'm going to be doing a lot of other things. I mentioned earlier I plan on building this axle and I'll show uh, putting a truss on it, uh, high steer, a um, few odds and ends, maybe some protection for my front steering. I keep also running that in the rocks. So yeah, it should be a lot of fun to build. But uh, I hope you guys appreciated the video. I hope you learned something. If you have any comments or questions, please let me know in the, down below. And uh, have a good one, guys. Until next time, uh, I'm just going to be working on this. I'll show you a little bit of my jig and uh, this thing's sitting in the bridge port. Have a good one.